So good, here we go. I hit refresh now and I can see that these have been success, success. These are my two ninety five hundreds. Um this one was the one that failed because uh, he's the guy we had to actually manually do. Uh, although what was a success is we managed to push the image down to the box. So, you know, how you measure success, that might be activation. Well, activation failed, to be fair, it failed. Distribution was successful. Uh, and then this one, this one's still in progress. Uh, it's probably having a bit of a, a wibble which is non-technical term for uh, an issue <laughs> because well, we reloaded the, uh, the the interim devices to to get to that box. So there's some final stuff we can check out on here. So if we just uh, look at this, so we it's based on the IP. If we look at the software image uh, reports the status, so you can have here so for two five three, uh, which was this one. I mean, this is not the best layout, but it's it's useful. We can have a look at what were the scripts that ran, and you can have a look at even and this is not too intuitive as well. If I'm completely honest with you guys, it's you got your pre-checks. So for example, the interfaces. Have a look at the interfaces. So what, how many were up um, beforehand? You know what what was the status of the various interfaces? So we can see it's eight there that were up. Um, but then if we looked at the show interfaces here, we did our post check, it's got a green tick next to it, but actually, yeah, uh, seven were up. So there was a, a slight difference between the two, so um, that could probably do with being looked at. I'll, uh, I'll look to raise a bug on that. Um, or not a bug, just, just to find out what if that's reported somewhere else, perhaps. So yeah, it's good. It gives you some level of uh, credibility, uh, assurance that it's worked. I mean, you can go through and you can look at the details of all of these, of course, and do. Well, I just did that same one. Look at the diffs. So it's not hard to go and do a quick check. You know, it's orange. Yeah, CDP it down. And the reason we're seeing these as red is because I've got those other devices doing upgrades as well. So there might be a difference. Um, spanning tree. Uh, yeah, so that that matched up. So it's good. It, it, it's certainly a lot more uh it offers a lot of value versus just uh, manually doing this we can just jump on those boxes and have a quick look then um so if we go onto this guy am i logged on yes we do show version 17.2 uh and this one as well Show version 17.2 and 17.2 I always wonder if this is a real guy, McPre. You know, he seems to compile all the code. Either he's a real guy and he's locked in a cage and all he does is compile code, or it's a fictitious name. Anyway, in summary, what we have to do is we have to, first of all, we have to have the box, the device we want to do the image upgrade on within our controller within DNAC we can do that via a discovery or the device might already be in through um, other means SDA uh, or another way we've managed it via, we've onboarded through plug and play or we've we've imported the database from prime infrastructure for example um, then through the design page we can go to the image repositories we have to make sure the relevant images are in our image repositories and they're assigned to the correct devices then when we're happy with those we can mark them as golden and define what device type you know distribution access core they're going to be golden for and then once we've done that we can go to our provision page and then under the software images we can see images that are need an update for example this one needs an update and we can then distribute the images to the boxes and then activate them at the same time or distribute them then later activate them now 
a question I've been asked from time to time is, uh, what about rollback? What if we needed to go back to 17.1? Well, then all we have to do is we simply go back to design, we go back to our image repository, we find the device in question, and then we go to 17.1, which is hiding from me down here, and we mark that as golden. And then we just repeat the process again, but for a rollback. Uh, not necessarily a code upgrade, it's, it's a code, let's call it a code migration or a code change. Downgrade. I didn't want to use the word downgrade. <laughs> Good. Anyway, this was quite an informal video. Oh, yeah, and what we also looked at, of course, uh, folks, was the fact that the code image upgrade failed on a few of those devices, and that was to do with some of the, the older config I had on that box, like the boot statements. We didn't quite get to the bottom of whether that was would have been relevant if we'd actually provisioned and fully integrated the device with DNAC, but um, it's good. It's good to see that it's, it's not totally infallible in some of the some of the pitfalls you have to be aware of. And yes, this was just supposed to be this is quick quick and informal uh, update to the software image management. The only reason I'm using this today was because I want to do a, an eVPN deployment and I needed 17.2 for that code. Um, and I can, I'm going to do a follow-up video actually on eVPN because I've got an interesting use case using some Jinja 2 templates. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully use uh, some sort of Jinja templates with DNAC to push that configuration down uh, to the boxes. So uh, stay tuned, folks, and uh, please continue to enjoy this DNAC content. How do I stop this video?